Yo, dudes and dudes, what's going on with y'all? This week I picked up Super Power. It's because aside from being an extremely awkward title to pronounce, it seemed vaguely interesting, and lately that's been a touch lacking. So let's dive on into this thing and see if it's a hidden gem or a clump of dirt. So we pick up with two agents who, in my mind, were dressed like the Blues Brothers, named Mr. Numbers and Mr. Transport. I hope those are code names. But they're going around the country collecting people who have been showing signs of powers that might be useful and or dangerous to introduce them to a program that'll help them become heroes under the U.S. government. Okay, I'm in so far. Sort of reminds me of The Boys in terms of addressing heroes in the real world. Hopefully it doesn't get really blunt about its political messaging in the third chapter. But we meet five of our supers, three boys, two girls. There's Nick, who has the power to will good or bad luck to happen. Urshul, who has a shifting type of power based on an alternative identity in his head. Vince, who has the power to absorb and release energy. Alice, who has flight and is a total spoiled rich girl. And Mary, who is an insanely strong telepath. But the majority of the story early on is about Nick and Vince as they expand their relationship and introduce us to a bit of light world building, such as the fact that supers are incredibly rare and only five colleges around the country have such a program. That being said, there is a lot of public superstition and distrust around the supers, which again, makes sense. Anyone who has unnatural abilities always draws mystique, interest, distrust, and skepticism. Think of psychics and seers in our world. The difference is that supers are undeniably not making their powers up, so skepticism wouldn't be as big an issue there. And it isn't here. So, not exactly astonishing world building, but it is solid, and I'll give points for that. We also get some deeper insight when Nick turns out to be a huge manipulator and hides everything real about himself and his plans behind a idiotic and loud personality. Likewise, numbers and transports are teachers but have some sort of secret agenda. Why is this the in thing with writing right now? Seriously, House of Wolves, Golden Couple, and now this? Not everything has to be Game of Thrones, guys. But we move on through the years, slowly delving in on more and more of the characters, and it's actually somewhat interesting, even if I would really prefer to keep the focus on just one character's perspective. And Herschel in particular is very accepting of his multiple personality shifting disorder, and weirdly together about all of it. It inconveniences him quite a bit, and you think that what he deals with, it might make him a total mess, but he's oddly fine, all things considered. But we do start following the characters and even learn bits and pieces about Sasha, who was a speedster that hits it off with Vince. There's a long bit with them learning throughout the year, especially with the gym coaches who were both very powerful in their own way. And through that year, there's just tons of character moments and we keep holding the lighter above the gasoline but refusing to light it. Honestly, some of the character stuff is pretty decent, as it'd damn well better be if we get 20 plus hours of it, but there's really a few moments that stand out for the wrong reason. One in particular is when Sasha keeps trying to sleep with Vince, and the author repeatedly refers to it as Hanky Panky, which I can't picture anyone from the past 50 years using. It's a small thing, but lots of small things add up to be a big problem. One thing also worth mentioning on its own is that Mary and Mr. Numbers have this ongoing chess match over and over, in a Magneto Professor X kind of deal, and they ask for Mary and Nick's help in something that they want to do to help bond the group. Mary and Nick agree to the something, but it never happens and we never learn what the something is. Like, actually removing this would make it far better. Finally, there's this whole thing with Powered versus Supers. Powered have a power but no control over it and there's a huge stigma about them being dangerous or lazy so they're kind of a second class citizen type of deal. This group has to hide that they were once Powered and now Supers, and it's not bad and they dance around it for a long time while building skills and relationships. Spoilers abound, so skip to me a final thoughts if y'all want to avoid plot details. But like a magician with the world's longest trick, it's only going to be worth the payoff if it is a spectacular ending, and this is underwhelming. Granted, 20 plus hours of build up, it would have to bring tears to my eyes to be worth it, but it really isn't. They get outed at a dance club, and ironically, no one there does anything about it, and everyone but Herschel and Mary get to leave. The strange love couple gets kidnapped by coaches literally out of fucking nowhere. I shit you not, they do not explain why. It happens out of nowhere, there's no James Bond rant moment to explain it, and then the kids appeal to Number and Transport for help. Transport repeatedly says, they took our kids, and Numbers rightly says, no, they're not ours, and then Transport gives Numbers the chess piece that he and Mary were using. Like, I get you can get attached to people, but the most attaching scene we have was whenever Vince and Transport got lunch because Vince was alone on Parents' Day and the chess thing. That there's no actual connection and growth between these characters. Nick basically says that the jig is up and reveals that he's not a powered at all, which raises a ton of questions that no one is prepared to answer, primarily in the surgery department, also in the fucking why department. There's a throwaway line in that he wanted to learn all he could about his power, but I don't actually see why him being at Lander helps any of that, because the only super-related homework was entirely self-supervised. So Nick apparently just wanted to waste a year, but he ends up doing a backseas in that classic Han Solo. Or rather, because there is literally no focus or emotion tied to that scene, it's a Han Solo light. And I mean really light. Like, don't touch it because it'll break. Honestly, there's a good bit between Alice and Nick because they had a whole will-they-won't-they they thing, and then she hits him. And that's fine, honestly, and this all takes place in front of three other people close to them, and the problem with that is that they all just cardboard cut out this shit. There's also a long thing where Vince knows that Nick will come back, and he's 
right, but I have no clue how he knew, because Nick totally lied to them for an entire year. And it's also worth mentioning that Vince comes up with a half-decent plan to attack the coaches, which is to absorb a wildfire. Awful convenient that he knew where one was at that exact moment, I guess. Ironically, if you were to have them searching for this on the internet while Alice and Nick are arguing, it would help that scene, but as it is, it doesn't. But yeah, they decide to save their friends while numbers and transport get chewed the fuck out, because obviously. Personally, I think that Vince probably could have gone with an active volcano, but uh, yeah, you do you, Vince, that's fine. My personal score is 7.5 out of 10. It's certainly not bad, but the ending, like I said, really didn't live up to what it needed to do, and a lot of the chaff probably could have been cut out. That being said, it's probably still worth a look if you have an interest in this type of thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at that bingo card. And despite dotting all over this thing as if it were a yellow bikini, we actually only hit bingo once. Still, I think it's worth mentioning everything that we did fill out. Just take a look at it there and draw your own conclusions from that, I guess. But anyway, that's all for this time. So if you have something else you want me to review, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know if you want to see what we get into next time. Go ahead and subscribe. Until then, drink plenty of water. Tell your parents that you love them and stay loke. Yeah, mustache at night. Wow.